This video is sponsored by Skillshare, and the entirety of my sponsorship fee for this video is being donated to the Black Lives Matter organization. More on that at the end. For now, enjoy the video. It's no secret that Notion is an incredibly powerful app that can do a lot of things, but can it work as a note-taking app? Well, you might think the answer to that question is obvious since it is an app where you can input text and create hierarchies of pages and pseudo folders. But personally, I have had a tough time answering this question for myself even though I've been using Notion for about two years at this point. And that is because before I discovered Notion, I used a little tool called Evernote for about 10 years. And when you use a tool for that long, you tend to get very used to the way that it's set up and changes to that setup can be hard to deal with. So over the past couple of weeks, I've given myself the challenge of building a system within Notion that gives me a lot of what I love from Evernote, but also takes advantage of many of Notion's unique features. So this is my note-taking system here in Notion. It looks pretty simple and that is actually on purpose because not only does it need to be very usable here, but to properly replace Evernote and to be something I can use at all times, it needs to be usable on my iPhone as well, where I have a lot less horizontal space to work with. And this setup works perfectly there. So the system consists of notebooks, which are here on the left. We also have an inbox, which works really well for quick capture, just quickly getting ideas out of my head when I don't have time to sort them correctly. And then something called the status dashboard, which is probably the coolest part of the system, but we're gonna get to that a little bit later. First, let me just show you what a notebook looks like. So these notebooks are actually databases, each of which contain many different notes. And if we look here, these notes have a status and also a category. The status is gonna be useful for the status dashboard and we can set them to open, we can set them to archived or urgent. And this basically lets you sort notes by the things that are relevant to your life right now, things that are even urgent and things that you want to keep for safekeeping, but you don't really need anymore. And those will be archived. We also have categories and what we can actually do is sort into one of these different custom views, which just kind of filters based on its category. So this is just production notes. This is just song notes. And what this essentially gets you is something just like what Evernote had with the notebook stacks and the notebooks. That afforded you two levels of hierarchy for organization. And this in turn gives you two levels of hierarchy. The first one being music, which contains our second level, which is our songs, our gear, our learning, singing, etc. And to create a new note, we have a couple of different options. Number one, we can just hit new right within this notebook and it's gonna give us a new note. And we'll just call it test note in this instance. So that now exists within this database. I can give it a category, which works really well. Let's just call it songs. I'm gonna have a great song called test note someday. And we can set a reminder for it if we want to. We can attach files to it if we want to. I'm just gonna leave it like this. So that's one way to add notes to the database or we can go and use that quick capture method where we're adding things to the inbox. Now the inbox is pretty much identical to these notebooks in terms of features. It's also filtered like this. It's also sorted by default by date updated, which is my preference. But of course you could change this however you want. And if we create a new note, which I'll just call test note two, then it's gonna be again, defaulted to open status and sitting here in the inbox. What I can do then is if I have like a review day on the weekend, I can go into my inbox and I can drag all of these notes to the notebook in which they belong. So test note, we'll say that's another song we wanna write, creating the ultimate note-taking system in Notion that would probably go in content. And finally, we have the status dashboard. So the status dashboard is a place that shows you all of the open and urgent notes across all of your notebooks. And this is using Notion's linked database feature, which essentially lets you see a database even if you are not on the page that contains that database. It's kind of like linking out to a database that exists somewhere else and showing you the contents. The interesting thing about linked databases is that if you edit the content, so if I edit one of these rows here, I will actually be editing the row in that database. If I delete one of these columns here, I will be actually deleting the column in that database. But 
linked databases have their own views. They have their own filters and their own sorts. So you can create custom views, custom sorts, do whatever you want with linked databases, and you're not going to affect the parent database, the real database. And we can use that to our advantage. So this status dashboard uses that to show me all the notes across my entire system that are either open or urgent. We are first sorting by urgent, and then we sort by date updated. So if I'm on a review day, once again, I can go through my system and I can look through and see you know, what's relevant to my life. Do I need to set something to archived? Do I need to set it to urgent? And I've also sorted it so that it shows any note that doesn't have a category. That way I can go through in the dashboard and categorize things. So site speed upgrades right here, I'm going to put that on projects. All right, so that being said, here's how you would add a new notebook to your system. First off, there's an add new notebook block here, and this is just a template block that contains a template database. So I can click it to generate it. And why don't we just call this notebook uh, DIY? I think that's a good parent notebook that could contain lots of different sub notebooks. And because this is built off of a template, a lot of the work is already done for me. I've already got my filters, I've already got my sort criteria, and I've already got a few different views here. Most of these don't really need any kind of editing before I start working, but I am gonna wanna edit this category view right here. And I wanna make more based on my categories. So. First, let's assign a category to this test note here. And uh, we've got a test one here. I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it to woodworking. So this will be my woodworking notebook. And I'm gonna come into category one. I'm going to rename that to woodworking as well. So this will be my woodworking notebook. And I'm just going to add a filter based on the category and it will be woodworking. So any note tagged with woodworking is now going to be in this woodworking notebook. And once you've done that, all you need to do to create additional category-based notebooks is to duplicate this view and then rename it to whatever you want. So maybe this one is gonna be metalworking. Yeah, I would love to get into welding in my spare time. And all we gotta do is, well, first add a category for metalworking and change our filter criteria. So as your notebooks expand and you add additional sub notebooks within the parents, you can go through this process of adding the category and then adding the filter. I know this is a little bit of work to set up um, and I thought really hard about how to make it easier and I couldn't really figure out a way that didn't compromise some of the other features, including the ability to have quick capture, the ability to easily sort, the ability to show the status dashboard. So it's a little bit of work to set up each notebook, but once you have those notebooks set up, you don't have any additional maintenance work. And at least personally, after I've got my first maybe, you know, 15 notebooks that kind of encompass my whole life built, then there aren't really any new notebooks being created on a regular basis. So personally, I'm okay with a little bit of initial setup work. And speaking of initial setup, one last thing we do need to do for this, other than setting a cool emoji, let's, let's give it a hammer, is to add this to the status dashboard. So here is one thing where I would love Notion to uh, add a feature. I would love the ability to duplicate a linked database and then change the database it's looking at, change the original database. That's not a feature right now, which kind of stinks because it means I can't duplicate this pre-set up linked database that has all the filters and the sorts. That'd be awesome, but that doesn't exist. So we're gonna hit the slash command and go to create linked database. And then all we need to do is search for the particular database we just created, and here we are. So again, the views we create here, the filters, the sorts, and any shuffling around of columns is going to be unique to the linked database. It's not gonna affect your notebook. But if we change anything about the content, that is actually going to affect what's in the real notebook. So what we need to do here first is number one, get rid of some properties that we don't care about, such as date created and files. I really don't care about those things. I just want these four. Next, we need to create a view. So we're just gonna call this table view and I'm gonna give it a capital V because it's going to default to creating two of them. Now, basically we need to do this so we can easily duplicate the filters and sorts we're gonna be creating here. If we don't make another view first, it's gonna be a kind of a pain to do it. Go in here, we're gonna create filters. And this is where Notion's new filter groups option comes really in handy. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna make a filter where I'm uh, filtering for status and I'm gonna filter for either open or urgent. And lastly, I want one more 
filtering for anything where the category is empty. This shouldn't happen with the way that I've set this system up, but just in case it does, I wanna have this filter criteria in here so I can use this as an easy place to set categories for anything that doesn't get it initially. Finally, the last thing we gotta do is set up a sort first based on status, and I want urgent to be first, so we're gonna go descending order, and then I want it to be sorted by date updated, also descending. And lastly, with this table view, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it, and I'm gonna call this duplicate list view. So this is gonna be that nice little list style database that is easily viewable on mobile. Hit that up, and then I'm gonna delete this original table view with the lowercase v, that's what Notion defaults to calling it, and I don't need it because it doesn't have any of those cool filters and sorts on it. Boom, there we're done. Again, a little bit of setup work, but once you've got it set up for each parent notebook, you don't have to do anything except for go through here and sort your notes. And look, I have creating the ultimate note-taking system in Notion with nothing on there. We're gonna call that YouTube because this here is on YouTube. So this notes database, as you might've expected, is a template and it is in the Notion template gallery now. So I will have that linked in the description below. And one additional tip that I wanna give you here for using this is to drag both the notes area itself and also the inbox specifically up to your favorites bar. That's gonna give you really quick access to basically every part of your notebook. If you open the toggle here, you have access to all of your parent notebooks. And because we built custom views for the subcategories, you can even drill into those subcategories from the sidebar. This was really important to me, which is another reason why I built it this way. And then last but not least, you have your inbox at the top, which means that when you're on your phone, when you're on the go and you don't have a whole lot of time, you can easily open up Notion, get to the inbox in just a couple of quick taps and add something to it and then have it in a place where you know you're gonna easily be able to sort it and organize it later on. So again, use this favorites area to your advantage and use it for things that you access beyond just your notes database. I've got my inbox here, I've got my notes sitting right here here, but I have a lot of other things that I need really quick access to on a really frequent basis, including my YouTube video tracker, which basically helps me run my channel and helps me make videos a lot more efficiently. And speaking of making videos, if you are a content creator yourself, if you make videos here, or even if you're aspiring to get into it in the future, then I want to take a second to recommend Christopher Rhodes' budget filmmaking class over on Skillshare. Christopher Rhodes is somebody I've been following for a long time. He has a channel here called YC Imaging, and his work is absolutely fantastic. In fact, if you've been following my channel for a few months and you've noticed the production quality increasing over time, that is due in part to a lot of the tips that I have picked up from Christopher. And his Skillshare class really gets into the details of how to make the most of modest gear or a small budget when you're making a video. And in particular, I really enjoy his lesson about location scouting, which is about taking one location and using it really creatively to get lots of different shot angles or even different sets out of that one small space. And because Christopher's class is on Skillshare, you're also going to have access to thousands of other classes across topics ranging from digital illustration to animation to personal finance to even productivity. And within that productivity category, you'll even find two classes taught by me, which cover the basics of setting up a productivity system and then how to build strong habits and actually stick to them in the long term. Membership on Skillshare is also really affordable with plans starting at less than 10 bucks a month. And if you're one of the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description down below to sign up, you're also gonna get a two month free trial with unlimited use of the platform so you can try it out before you buy. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I am donating the entirety of my sponsorship fee for this video to the Black Lives Matter organization. Honestly, with everything that's been going on over the past few weeks, I don't know what the perfect thing to say that would be helpful would be, but I do know that saying and doing nothing would be the wrong thing to do. This channel is about self-improvement for the most part, but I think that we should be using the gains we make through self-improvement to be improving the lives of other people as well and to be calling out and fighting against injustice when we see it. And it's clear to me that black people in my country and around the world deal with systemic racism and injustice on a daily basis, in addition to many voices that are trying to say that injustice doesn't exist. It absolutely does, and I want to make some small effort to use my platform to both amplify black voices and to help, which is why I'm making this donation, and which is why instead of calling out all the subscribe stuff that I usually have on the screen here, I just want to point you to a video by Emmanuel Acho that I watched last week called Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. This was an eye-opening look for me at some of the different types of racism that people have to deal with on a daily basis, and I highly recommend you go watch it and also subscribe to his 
this channel. He's turned this into a series and the other videos are just as good. Beyond that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful in some way. Again, I'm gonna have the template link for this note-taking system in the description down below, which should hopefully save you a lot of effort if you wanna implement it for yourself. And as always, I will see you in my next video, which is coming out in just a few days.